Welcome to the Winning Move Podcast. I'm your host, Stratton Brown. I interview successful entrepreneurs from around the world to see what moves they've made in their lives to get successful and more importantly, stay successful. I'm here to make sure you can create a better life for you and your family. Let's tune in. What's going on? I got an awesome guest for you guys today. Actually, a call magician's client. He's killing it. His name is Alex. Alex, how do I even pronounce your last name, bro? I've never tried to. Grigoriev. It comes from Russia originally. Grigoriev. Okay. Yeah. Um, some quick <laughs> housekeeping stuff, guys. We have an event on September 2nd here in Fresno, California. We have two awesome people come to speak who went from homeless, on the run, drug addicted, and then now they're making $80,000 a month flipping houses with zero overhead. It's fucking fat, amazing what they've created. And like, they're the number one flippers in the Central Valley. It's the coolest thing ever. But let's start off, man. Alex, thank you so much for coming on, bro. Introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about what you got going on. Yeah, Strat. No, thank you very much for having me. Um, so I live in Las Vegas, uh, got into real estate about four years ago. Um, and it all started, honestly, because I got fired from a nine to five job. Um, okay. And was going nowhere with that job. I hated my life, hated not having the freedom. And I was like, how can I, how can I generate money without having to like come in, clock in, start working for this job that I don't care about. They don't care about me. And that's kind of how it all started. After I got fired, you know, I just kind of got the itch YouTube university, a lot of podcasts like this. Um, and just kind of started hearing about wholesaling was the first thing I heard about. Um, and then got my license, uh, in California, I was living at the time and it just kind of was all, all go from there. You know, I, I just kept kind of building and building, you know, I, I did a year of, you know, straight realtor on market, you know, showing buyers houses as I was kind of learning more about the wholesaling. Um, also got my license in Vegas where I'm at in Nevada and then to kind of put it all together. And at one point just you know, put my foot in and, and did the first, you know, started spending money on marketing on the wholesale side. Um, and, and that's kind of how it went from there. Um, what did you do nine to five? So this nine to five was a weird, uh, basically they, it was like a company that made promotional, like they would make like gift bags in like thousands for like Toyota and like these big companies. Like it was like, for like key chains. It was a really weird kind of like, something that's just not exciting at all. Not, not, not anything that, you know what I mean? I could have seen myself doing long-term. Um, and it was just, you know, standard, like I was the, you know, bottom of the bottom of the company coming in, you know, filling out paperwork orders. Like it was just, it was, it was awful. I mean, I, I, I did get my degree in college and that was the only reason I even was probably able to get a job like that, but it just, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. And, and I'm honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me was, was getting fired from that job. Because I feel like if, you know, everybody wants that safety, sometimes that, that W2 that pays you. And if I wouldn't have gotten fired, I don't know if I would have just left. So how did that job help you prepare for like what you got going on now, as far as like company structure, team structure, leadership and all that other stuff? Yeah. So um, that specific job, I wouldn't say helped me too much with that. But what did was, you know, I grew up playing sports um, and. I know you did as well. And I think that's kind of what really now the, the team environment, you know, right now I have a team, I think we're like six of us. And now obviously we have you guys, you know, I think we have three of you guys, three callers from you guys that we've been with for three months now. And that's been killing it, honestly, for us. Um, but the, that team environment and, and kind of accountability and, you know, pumping each other up. And, and when, when somebody like, you know, nobody gets mad when, you know, we have a couple acquisitions guys and, when one person gets a, a contract, the other one's not really, there's no, you I mean, it's competitive, but there's no jealousy. There's no, you know, everybody's working as a team and we're, we're all in, you know, slack, like pumping each other up, like good, good stuff. So that kind of came from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, structure wise, I can tell you that, um, you know, it's a, it's a whole, it's a completely different thing than a nine. It was actually an eight to six more so than a nine to five, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah, just, man, just thinking back on that, uh, how much better it is, you know, being, being motivated to like actually build something yourself and, and, and being interested in something, you know, I don't care about no keychains for Toyota, you know, but being able to, you know, 
help people in real estate and also you know obviously you know we, we we love acquiring deals we love analyzing deals getting a deal under contract is what we live for like that's that motivates us daily so how important has the competition been between your acquisitions guys right because we're hiring on more sales reps and i don't want to hire on one at a time i want like two mm -hmm. to three i want those motherfuckers to go at it because yeah. right? if it's only yeah. you then it's no fun like there's no competition but if i can create that right. competition and you have that pressure of just mm -hmm. Oh man, I, I gotta get it, or he's gonna get it. It's a lot. Better right, right. What I've seen. Right. No, hundred percent. Actually, it's it's funny you say that because just recently, I when one of our newer acquisitions guys got a deal under contract, I realized that we had like three roll in two days after that, and I and I, I was looking, and I, I could tell that the other guy was like, "Hey, I gotta step my game up." You know what I mean? The competition was there. He's like, "Look, yep. this guy's getting deals. He just came on. Like, I can't let him show me up." And so that's kind of how you know we 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 run our our operation. Um, everybody's kind of competitive and it really pumps each other up. You know, um, I have, I have like a, I have a partner as well. He, he's basically now, I guess you could say like the head head of acquisitions. So everything kind of funnels through him on the acquisition size at this point. Um, okay. he's been with me for like almost like a year and a half now. And he's just, he's, he's been killing it. And I was like, you know, he's been, you know, he put his blood, sweat, and tears into this. And so I was kind of like, you know what, let's, let's, uh, let's put him on the LLC and make him a partner here. So, yeah, that just recently happened as well. So what made you want to do that? Because number one, and I'm somewhat big on equity. My goal is though mm -hmm. to create a big enough dream for them to make more money regardless, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing so much goddamn revenue that even if they right. were a partner, cool, right. but like they're making so much money because we're making so much money anyways. Exactly. Yeah. No, and that's that was the thing. It was like it made me want to do it because, well, one, I feel like once you see, you know, you know how it goes, like acquisition people, especially like they, you, they really come and go, you know what I mean? And when you find somebody that's good and not only good, but then loyal and is trying to like build this with you, you know what I mean? You got to reward that because there's nothing that makes me feel better than seeing him make money. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what made me do that. And I was, you know, in the long run, I'm like, like you said, like I'm going to be him making more money is only going to make me make more money. So why wouldn't I put him in a position where it's going to basically domino effect everybody you know what i mean let's motivate him like i want to give him this equity i want to give him you know the split everything so that's kind of what motivated me to do that i love it dude and um as far as your team what are you what type do you run off eos what are you doing as far as internally like team wise in terms of i'm sorry like, so CRS? like um, company structure like um mm -hmm. use traction have like daily huddles level 10 meetings like what yeah that look like? yeah we have level so we do level 10 meetings um we actually have a we have a meeting every single day basically 9 a.m um basically we kind of we have we have two separate meetings so we have a sales meeting which it's only like me or me my partner and then the sales guys but then we have another meeting where it's just me my partner and then my transaction coordinator and another person who kind of helps with the marketing so we kind of separate them because like the sales is like you know, we have them role playing and then just basically kind of going over what deals specifically, you know, we have right now. And like, mm -hmm. we got to be called like on the spot where my other meeting, like I don't need my transaction coordinator and my, and my assistants really hearing that stuff. So I go have that meeting with them separately and I have this other meeting. And then Monday, we also have an entire company meeting as well. So that's once a week where everybody's involved in one. And then daily we have that split meeting where it's, and we try to keep it brief because, you know, we don't want to like, Oh, yeah. overdo it and then have the you know what i mean and exhaust them before they get on the phone like you know everybody's like oh shit, we just did this hour meeting now let me take a break like no you know we're trying to get to the point figure out what we have to do what the hit list is you know we call it the hit list it's like everybody has you know who is like ready to get under contract today you know what i mean um yep. and that's priority and then after that you know we go through the the standard you know follow up the standard you know system that we have in place for kind of um hitting leads from every angle and so what metrics do your sales guys have to hit? Like, hey, every day you got to be here, here, mm -hmm. here, and here. If you're not there, you're fucking failing. Yeah. In terms of like literally the numbers or? Of like numbers that you hold them to. Yeah. Like, hey, this is what So we it's 50. Do. So right now it's 50 a day dials. Um, And that's another thing is that two of my acquisition guys are actually part time right now because they're, they basically work four to five hours. Um, They're coming on. They're actually going to transition full time. Right now we have them doing 50 calls. Um, and I know it's, it's, it could be a little bit low. A lot of people will say that's a little bit low. Um, but we, from there, we, we really expect is we want one per day, basically per person to, to come into some sort of like, Hey, we've, you know, we've dived into the pain. 
we basically are in the conversation of like, all right, let's make this happen kind of thing. You know what I mean? Where it's like really a warm layup okay. deal where we're just waiting on the finalizing. That's one a day per acquisition person. But in terms of dials 50 and they need to have about 20 like good conversations per day. So we have that. And they, they basically just Google, we have a, we have a spread, a Google sheet that they fill out every day. Um, and they kind of fill it out. And then my, my assistant at the end of the week kind of just goes through and make sure that, you know, they're actually hitting those numbers and, and not fabricating them either. Okay. And what types of marketing are you doing, bro? You got us. And then what, what are the other things you're doing? So in, so I've been, so in my entire wholesale career, I've tried pretty much everything except for direct mail. I've never done direct mail. But right now, and I think what we see is going to be the future is going to be you guys cold calling and and honestly Facebook. So we we've killed it on Facebook. Facebook ads have just destroyed it for us always. Um, and I've reshuffled like I had PPC going from like June, May till July or something like that, and it was just like we were spending so much money and. They're so like we're, we're everybody that we had on PPC basically was shopping us with another person, right? And Facebook is can be similar, but Facebook is just so much cheaper. Um, so in my opinion, I feel like Facebook and PPC, at least what we've seen, have been very even in terms of like the quality of the lead, but then the price is like half. So it's like a no brainer. Yeah. I'm like, why don't we just? So yeah, Facebook and 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 you guys. Um, and then also we've had a lot of success with SMS in the past, but as everybody knows, things have gotten a lot different recently. So, um, you know, we actually even last week just tried to retest and see if we can get back into that space because we have, you know, looking back on 2020, we did a lot of, uh, we had a lot of good closed deals through SMS. So we're like, we don't want to just give that avenue up, but you know, then we were seeing like, we'd send out 1500 messages and we'd get like nine responses. And I'm like, there's, you know, there's some, something going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I still have, and I don't know if you know my boy Gino, uh, Gino's mm -hmm. probably in Steve's thing with you. Gino's still killing it with text. And mm. I have another friend who's killing it with text. And then everybody else is like, bro, it's dog shit. And then for yeah. me, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on Facebook ads and it's never gone well. Like not once. Really? And then That's I've interesting. Had, I've had a friend spend fifty thousand dollars just to make fifty five thousand dollars in Facebook ads. Like in assignments wow. to where for me and it's from what I've seen, man, it's been like market specific. And so like what markets yeah. are you um really hitting with your Facebook ads. And then we'll talk about your other, your other marketing too. Oh, I can't hear you, Brody. Can you hear me? I'm back. Sorry about yeah. that. I don't know what just happened. So actually what we've seen recently is well, when we really started hitting was a lot of our dispo right now is uh, we were working with a hedge fund and this hedge fund is obviously not just in one state. Um, we are Facebook same ad is going across like 20 different markets. So it's not per one market. Okay. Um, the reason that is, is because the algorithm, I really think just, if you only go to one market, it's, there's just not as many eyeballs on it. Right. And if you have that same ad going across many different markets, that's what I've recently found was the best success we've had. Like we were, we were doing, I think it was like $50 a day. Um, and at one point we were pulling, like, I think we were getting like, five, six leads a day, which is good. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, and I think that's, that's pretty good. You know, five, six solid ones too. Off of so, 50 bucks? Off 50 bucks a day. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. That's really good. And I think what it comes back to another thing is that we, I spent a lot of good money and time on actually making good, like we, I, I pay for a video, like a video ad. I had a marketing guy, like really actually like make good content with it. Like, you know, you see those offer pad open door video ads, like the it looks like a commercial, like in the Super Bowl. Like, I think that matters. You know what I mean? I think that yeah. the content of the ad actually definitely matters because, and I think maybe that's why we've had success. So um, that plus the multiple markets. Um, and yeah, like, even though I'm in Vegas right now, I'd say 90% of our business is in uh, central and North Florida. That's where we're just crazy right now. Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, uh, Polk County. That's where a lot, like, that's that's our sweet little pocket right there, Polk County. We love that area. So, um, that's yeah, that's that's what we've seen. But, you know, we, we, we just closed an Alabama deal, Facebook ad. Um, where else? Oh, Texas. We we did Granbury, Texas, right outside of Fort Worth. Just closed one there. We have a Hawaii deal. So, yeah, I think I think the, the Facebook ads really work. In my opinion, they've worked best when you go to multiple markets, I think. 
Uh, I'm sure people have seen success when they go market specific, you know, uh -huh. but for us, that's what we've seen. Oh, bro, I love it. Um, with, did you see a drop off when I, the new iOS update came up um, with your Facebook ads? Right. Cause we do yeah, uh, like the e-commerce stuff and like our other marketing, mm -hmm. like right, everyone you do hold off a little bit. Yeah. So that's why, and actually that's another thing I recommend is, I don't know if you guys have like a rep there, but I have a Facebook rep like that works for Facebook. Um, and I talk to her like every week or every other week. And she like will sit there and like look through it. And then you know how they changed. Originally you used to be able to ask them for the address and all that stuff like right directly there. Then they changed all that. And if you just talk to the rep, like they're, they're cool. They'll help you kind of be able to figure it out. Um, At you know, be able to go through did you get a rep? When I was running ads, I, I think, never got a rep. I think it like must have been that. once we spend a certain amount of money. Uh, it probably, cause it was probably like six months into when we were, and I was putting like at that time already like four or five K I had it even higher back then. It was like a thousand a month. Um, and so maybe that's what it is. I think it, you, there maybe is a minimum, but I'm yeah. sure there's, you know, if you reach out there, there, I don't know what the exact requirement is, honestly, but I'm sure if you reach out you know, they'll at least be able to tell you like, Hey, spend this much more. And we'll get you your personal rep. So, but I definitely think that's a huge thing because she really helps me like with such little nuances too. like, Oh, don't place it here. Place it here. Like, do manual placements don't do automatic placements so she's really helped me with that stuff well and like the nest was the most frustrating thing for me because like i was throwing down like over a period mm -hmm. of time like testing it out but i wasn't throwing out huge chunks of cash and then if something would go wrong oh did i lose you alex well if something went wrong i would never ever be able to um talk to anybody right facebook would just shut your shit down and be like all right sorry bitch it's over like right do it again right like, even now we have net we have worldwide facebook pages and ads going up on like the hiring side for what we do with call magicians and we don't know the rhyme or reason of why shit happens we just have to keep doing different shit it's kind of weird right yeah um i think that just it, it and it will only keep changing too i think you know what i mean like as we oh, keep yeah. going like new things are going to come in um and that's why I do think that that like daily and that kind of comes back to everything with your you know operation and systems like you got to be checking in and, and quality control that stuff all the time because that things will change like by the week by the month like you know I was like at one point before I hired you guys I was like I'm never doing cold calling ever again you know <laughs> I used to have to I used to pull VAs off of like off Upwork and try and manage them and all this stuff and it was just such a headache and I was like all right I, if you would ask me like in January do you think you'll cold calling will be a big part of your business I would have told you there's there's zero percent chance um but you know what i mean like things change you know what i mean and then like i was able to find you, you guys where for me it's like that's the big the biggest difference is just like those leads are just coming in and like i don't have to talk to I mean, obviously there's some talking to your vas and, and the people there but not really you know what i mean like it's it's running on its own so like i i don't want, not only me but even my partner that's part of the acquisition does not have time to be sitting there to, asking the va about every lead you know what i mean there's just we can't oh, do that bro. And people don't get it, right? When you start getting like bigger and bigger and bigger to where like you have like an operation inside of an operation, then another operation inside of an operation to where you just have separate departments mm -hmm. that you have to manage, right? And then it's setting mm -hmm. up and then you have to have your partner going through and set up all of the systems and process processes to get that mm -hmm. thing dialed in so we don't have to do it. And then that takes a while. Right. And then it's still just, bro, replacing people, replacing people, replacing people. Because I don't want to say right. cold callers are like acquisitions reps. Like a lot of them, like, bro, all right, you're fine. Like, we got to get someone new. Like, we'll get someone else who will do the job. Right, right. And then we just right. have to sit them down to where we'll place them and you don't really miss a beat. Right. Yeah, no, I, I love that because, I mean, there's, in my opinion, there's no other way to do cold calling. Anybody that's telling me that they just have this one cold caller that is just making them, like, I, I just, I would love to see it because, like, the only way this would work is, like, it's systemized. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it has to be a machine, like, especially with, like, you know how many people are cold call, like i mean how many people get robo calls all this stuff like there's no way you're gonna have one person just like hitting the phones for a couple hours a day and you're managing them like there's, there needs to be an entire machine of a system moving for this to actually work oh bro hand like we don't now we don't work with anybody unless we're gonna hire on two callers just because like we've seen the yeah, success rate with one versus two and it doesn't even make sense mm -hmm. for us to like work with you unless you're gonna do two because we know you'll be yeah. so much more successful Mm -hmm. for sure for sure uh, not not even talking about like just in terms of like it's a numbers game like you know what i mean like it's legitimately like, you in order <laughs> yeah like you know what i mean like it's
think about it, you have to put out those numbers and, and, it, and it does work though. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, my, my just hope is that, I mean, my goal long-term, I don't think PPC is in our long-term just because the thing with PPC is like, you're going to get eaten by Zillow and, and those people and you know, all the, all the big, big I buyers, like you, you can't outspend them. You know what I mean? Like you can't no. like, and so it's just, in my opinion, like, you know, at one point you like, I, you know, I was just kind of throwing darts at the wall and being like, all right, what's going to stick marketing wise and then I'll be fine. You know what I mean? Um, so I just think that in the long term, PPC is too expensive. Um, you're going up against everybody. You know what I mean? Like every, especially if you're in some sort of market, like I'm in Vegas and That's I mean, we'll still, I'm still licensed in Vegas. Yeah. No, Vegas yeah. is like a whole different animal. And I know there's like some big players still doing great out here. You know, I don't know about if they're doing great on PPC, but I mean, you could still do a lot of business, but it's it's a whole different animal out here. If you do PPC in Vegas, uh, you know that's you're spending an insane amount of money. So, bro, an insane amount of money. Um, whoever this is, what's going on? What's going on, Gerald? What's going on, Emilio? Two more of our clients, actually, and friends of mine. Um, bro, what was your lowest point at the beginning when you got started in real estate? Lowest point. Um, let's see um deals falling through like i remember my first deal i thought it was gonna be my first deal it fell through so uh it was like two or three months before like after i first started marketing and we had this deal under contract already assigned seventeen thousand dollars and uh we were in escrow thing like it was it was done like buyer was done and it was like 40 days after and then and then we couldn't get the tenant out and we thought we were gonna get the tenant out and the seller was like saying basically, and this is California, so you know how this works, but um, he the seller was like, yeah, like I'll help you this and that. And then like, I'm, I'm already assuming like, okay, like in my head, I'm like, All right, I'm about to make $17,000. Like I haven't seen really money like this before. You know what I mean? And yeah. this was like, you know, back then. And, and uh, on like day, like one day after, like literally from contract, he didn't even say a word. Like he played us the whole time. And it was just like, I get a notification from escrow. He's just like, that yeah, seller canceled, sorry. It's done. And it was like, we, we drove all, this was in like by Palm Springs. What is it called? Desert hot Springs. That's what it was. And, uh, we drove out there. I was living like in the Valley in LA and I was just, I drove out there like three different times, like two and a half hours. Like I was just like, and after 40 days and like, that was devastating. Like I was, I can't even tell you how devastated I was. Like, yeah, I was absolutely devastated like uh, that, but that kind of comes back to like anybody who thinks this is just like a, like it's all, you know, fine and dandy. Like you have to fall on your face to really be able to do this stuff, you know? And it's all about how you, like, if you're resilient it can come back and then fall on your face. And then I didn't give up though after that, you know what I mean? That was the difference, you know? And, but yeah, that was the lowest point. I, I remember that deal. I remember that deal. <laughs> I'll never forget that deal. So yeah. How long did it take for you to get another deal? So then I actually got a deal pretty quickly after that. It was like another like month and a half. It was small though. It was like 7,000 and it was in Vegas. Um, then I like, didn't get another deal until like that. So it was, that was like August. Then I got the, the deal fell through in August and I got like the end of September. I remember I got my first Vegas deal and then I didn't close another deal till January or February. And then that year was when we finally started hitting like, you know, at the end of that year. And I was still a realtor at the time too. So I was kind of like, you know, foot in, foot out. I mean, I still hold my license because more so for like referrals, you know, if like my family members trying to like yep. buy a house in Vegas or something like that, you know what I mean? That's what it's for. And I think it, it, there's a, you know, there's an element of credibility too. you know, like, Hey, like I'm not just like a 19 year old wholesaler that <laughs> found out about this. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that you can't be a knowledgeable person like that. I just think that it, that's one other aspect. I think having that license helps with the credibility a little bit. Um, but yeah, so that's, <laughs> That's kind of how it went down. So, how much do you like being an investor rather than a wholesaler, bro? Or rather than an agent? Sorry. Oh, so I, I like way more. I hate being an agent, honestly. I will, like, if I like you and like you're my family member, or, like a family friend or something like that, like I'll take care of you and I'll make sure like I'm a good agent. But I hate the customer service aspect, you know? Like, I'm not trying to sit somebody and hold somebody's hand and like, show them a bunch of houses and like, that's just not in it for me like i'm in this to like like let's negotiate i love negotiation i love acquisitions you know what i mean like i just took myself out of acquisitions out of my operation like this year like and and you know that's because i just that's the only really way to get bigger i feel like at one point you know yeah. uh, but i love that aspect so 
um i i the agent stuff is not for me you know what i mean like it's the customer service is just like you know this and that if anything i just hold it for anything that we need to do or like i said referrals you know what i mean so yeah that's, well, that's that pretty true. Out, um what virtual hurdles are you going through like when did you start really doing virtual and then like what were the bottlenecks you were running into like at, during that because it's mm-hmm. number one i think it's a mental barrier that you have to like really break through to do a virtual deal like you're just like what yeah right so i think with virtual um i think it all comes back to though like you said like you gotta it's the mental thing like just do something like at least attempt first and you're like you're gonna fall on your face and you'll learn something each time like for us like and then the further you go along the more like resources you'll have out there like now we have a realtor in that area in florida who's just like a killer and like he's like on our team like he'll do whatever we need we pay him you know he, he's like he, he'll go to wherever like he'll pull up on a tenant he'll go you know get pictures like he'll do whatever and like having that is important um but the other aspect for us is this hedge fund that we work with they're so big that they usually if it's their like their their product because they don't they don't buy everything right they're very specific about the house that they're buying if it's their if it's their product though they'll do everything like we put it under contract they have their own inspection company they do everything you know what i mean we're literally just in communication with the seller by phone um hedge fund does their inspection everything else oh obviously the the other big thing is make sure you obviously you have a good closing and an, an escrow company uh title title and escrow company because um that's definitely important as well especially for the virtual side you know what i mean because you're like okay once you do one and then you're in a rhythm now i'm like all right cool i already know where this is going and now i'm like you find i'm it? not even gonna really facebook and that that's i mean i owe facebook so much mark zucker <laughs> like i was so much of our business has like whether it's facebook groups facebook ads whatever it is like it's uh you know we we've uh another thing is we started recently building like a jv aspect to the hedge fund so because we can sell everything to them at market value and uh yeah facebook just facebook 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 um i go into like a group florida investor group and just you know hey can anybody recommend this next thing you know 10 people will leave a comment with like different companies and i'll just call them all and then i talk to one and realize that you know they're a good fit and these guys are just beasts you know and they're just you know closing beasts all they do is like investor stuff so um that's basically how that would happen facebook 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 but that's how i if it's ever in a random market do we have no idea what's going on i hop on like a facebook group that i know and i'll ask mm-hmm. and i'll see who their mutual friends are if we have a mutual friend i'll give them a call i'm like hey can you do this for me i'll pay you that's yeah, legitimately exactly. how i do a lot of like my boots on the ground stuff if something happens in a random aspect mm-hmm. and by, and originally before we were like dispo hedge funding like i found a lot of buyers that way too like um i mean i wouldn't recommend like you can't just that's not the only way but like i i can count i mean we've made at least two hundred thousand dollars from a facebook buyer you know what i mean like from somebody yep. we found on facebook for sure so and they're looking for you too like you know what i mean <laughs> like they're trying to find deals so like it's not like it's like really hard like if you have a deal like they'll find you you know what i mean or you obviously how are you protecting say, hey, yourself against it. those new people against uh new like uh new buyers or yeah against the new buyers bro you can't trust anybody in this shit. like so what are yeah, you doing I mean, to I, keep yourself leveraged well keep your so leverage on your side i just think that like with experience i've kind of been able to like figure out my own way of like vetting just because i've seen it i'm like all right i can easily do my research or quickly be able to tell if this person is legit one you know, plus like you, like you said, mutual friends, like I know this person is doing deals with this person and he's not going to screw me. You know what I mean? Something like that. It's, but that's not like something you can really, that's, I mean, you can train somebody, but like, it just comes with experience. Like I've, I see these groups and I know what's going on. And like, I know these profiles and I'm like, all right, this person looks sketchy. I don't really know much about him. He doesn't know anybody. I know he's not active, whatever it might be. So that's a little bit of vetting. Plus, I mean, just like you do a little Google search on this person. Not, not everybody's gonna be on Google, obviously, but um, yeah, I think it just comes with like an experience with experience of being able to vet somebody really, I think. Okay. And so talk about, and we were talking about this the other day, the hedge fund buy boxes and how bizarre it is. And like, how did yeah. you get in contact with the hedge fund? And then how were you learning their buy box? Like, did you, t- did they tell you or you're just like setting them shit and just figured it out? 
Yeah. So the the whole hedge fund thing is it's it's really is its own thing. They, it's it's hard. I mean, it's basically only a three bedroom plus. It's got to be built after like 1990 or something insane. It's got to be. It can't be like next to a double yellow line in traffic. It can't be near a, a cemetery. Like they have the weirdest rules. Um, but the the it's not as simple as like you know when you have a deal you just contact the buyer. It's a little bit different than that. You know like. I actually used LinkedIn and I was like, like, I was like researching. And I was like, originally I first saw, I was like, okay, who is this LLC buying everything right here? Like literally like they're like, they bought 70% of this count, like city. I'm like, what is going on? And so I'm like, who is this? So I just researched, what is this LLC? Found their, their other LLC and another LLC basically untangled it. Found somebody on LinkedIn, messaged like 10 people. Nobody responded. Found this one of their phone numbers, called her. And she was like this head of somewhere. And she's like, yeah, let me uh, connect you to somebody that can like help you. And I'm like talking to this like VP. She's like, try to get me off the phone. Cause this is like a, like a 30,000 person. I mean, I don't know if it's that big, but it's a huge company. You know what I mean? They're right, probably massive. traded on wall street. So yeah. So, um, and then eventually we got in with a, a really good rep and, and yeah, like she, we, we love it. Like it's such a streamlined process. The issue is like you, we kind of curated our, like everybody that you guys are calling for us is all hedge fund, you know, um, you just have to make your list. That's just that product as much as you can, at least, um, you know, the, that's the negative part, the, but the positive part is like, you know, you don't, I mean, it's hard to find this like 70% of ARV stuff anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's right. It's really hard. I mean, you can, but like anybody that's like, really that on, Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yep. Sorry about that. So anybody that's relying on their business um, on, you know, deals that are like, you know, 70% of ARV and then you got to think repairs and then assignment fee and, and all this other stuff. Um, I don't, I, I don't know anybody that's kind of, yeah, it's tough. That's why the, you know, all the sub two stuff and the creative and, and our kind of difference is like, Hey, like we can find people who want to sell their house at market value all the time. And it's like, Okay, so why don't we just market for that product? You have to have that relationship with the hedge fund because it's not, it wasn't, it was definitely not just like, hey, I have a deal. Let me submit this to you guys. You know, like there was a little bit of, um, you know, vetting and, and they'll stop working with you. Like, you know, if, if they don't like you or if like they feel like you're not serious, you know, you really have to keep that relationship kind of going. Um, and so we've built a relationship with like one very specific rep there and she, she likes us, she trusts us. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it went. Wow. Um. So you have to, and like, what are you doing to like keep that relationship good? Like, are you only sending, how do you, like, how did you start sending them shit? Right. Cause again, like you're dealing with a completely different type of person where generally mm -hmm. wholesalers, it's the most unprofessional people on the planet. Uh, right. low barrier to entry to where this person's working for a company traded on wall street. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this particular hedge fund, they don't not buy from like off market stuff. So like they do work with certain, whether it could be like a brokers that has off market stuff or like, or good wholesalers, but you can't just like have these one deal a month situations where like you really have to systemize it. So the way it happened was like, I had a bunch of leads like in our CRM that was like, I just looked through it and I was like, you know what I mean? Like there's, they're, they're almost deals or something. And I'm like, and we have so many leads and I'm like, I sent her like a spreadsheet of like 20 of them. And I was like, Hey, like, we like, will you guys take any of these? And she hit me back and was like, yeah, we'll take like these six. And I was like, all right, cool. And we went back and locked those up that wouldn't, weren't deal otherwise. And basically the way Florida works, and that's another reason Florida is so good for us, just because the, the laws are a little more lax about double closing and, and all that good stuff because they don't do assignments. Um, so, so yeah, we just basically, you know, sent the contracts and that was it from there. You know what I mean? Like from there, I was like, all right, we're, we're stopping everything we're doing and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to market for these houses for them. You know what I mean? Cause I was like, the, the numbers they were purchasing that were, were insane. I was like above what Zillow has it at. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's continue this. Um, and so that's kind of really? where we, where we were. Yeah. It, again, it's gotta be a very, that product, very, yeah, very specific, be but if it is, they'll buy it at or above market. So, and were you doing, talk about the, were you doing novations? Yes, yeah, so the innovations we have not been able to 
build a system successfully yet. <laughs> we did close a deal doing it, but not something that we feel comfortable. Like, you know, with this hedge fund system, I was like, we're all in on this. Like we're going in, like this is what we're doing. The novation was a little bit, a little bit trickier because I think that also per state, again, the laws are different. So, you know, you, you can't pull off everything in California that you can in Florida, you know what I mean? I'm not saying that anything is wrong, but like certain contracts and certain double closing and this title company is not going to do this. Like certain title companies don't even do assignments in, in California. I'm like, what? Like, that's a pretty standard thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you so, got to find the right one. Right. You got to, you got to find the right one. So, um, yeah, Novation was, we, we did pull one off, but I thought really works well for, you know, a non hedge fund type of house. That's not quite a wholesale number, but also like there's some sort of spread there. It's a, it's basically a wholesale, honestly. So, I mean, what happened was this, this one, we, we made 47,000 on it though. So it was, a, it was a great deal, but, um, basically we, he didn't want to do anything with the house. He's like, just give me this number, this and that. I'm like, all right, well, we can do that, but we have to, you know, do a little bit of work to that. He's, he's like, I don't care. He's like, I'll sign whatever. Just give me 200,000. So, you know, we put a new AC in there and we like cleaned the place up, did pretty well, did it all in escrow and, you know, had a, had an agent sell it basically on the market and it was, you know, good to go from there. So yeah, um, we're not comfortable yet putting that into like a, an entire system and having our sales guys necessarily pitch that. Like if I see one in our lead system and I'm like, me, this will work here, you know, we'll uh -huh. one off it where either me and my partner will hop in and be like, all right, let's figure this out. But like, we can't have our acquisitions guys either pitching that or, or figuring that out quite yet, you know, so. All right, well, it's, you don't really think about it, but then like you're teaching them a completely new method to close, right? And then, right. They, and as you grow right now, you got the sub two close, you got the innovation mm -hmm. close, or the finance close, mm -hmm. and then there's the regular cash close. Right, right. now they got like five different things they got to pitch and be knowledge mm -hmm. on and feel confident enough to like, like, no, we're going to solve your problem. Because if the person hesitates, then you're never going to close the deal anyways. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why it's like, let's not complicate this for them right now. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. you know, and, and it's because there's one in few between too. That's another thing is like in my, at least what we've seen is we're only able to pull it off for a couple deals. So, you know, where if we're marketing for these hedge fund deals, like everything that's coming in, we know exactly. It's very simple. Like if it has this, another thing is they don't like pools. It's an, uh, they don't like houses with pools. Um, it's another weird rule. I don't know why. I guess the thing is what they do is they buy them and then they just rent them out in like in massive scales. So um, they're like just, they're the ultimate buy and holder, I guess. Um, but, but yeah, they, I guess maybe more liability because of the pool in the back end for renting. Yeah. So something along those lines, but yeah. So who handles your dispo? Is it you? Unfortunately, right now it's me. Yeah. And a little bit of my partner who who is also doing all the acquisition, right? That's kind of our next steps is like, um being able to like have people do it i think our dispo is a little bit different than most people's where um you know we're not like mass blasting these things out and um dealing negotiating with like 30 different buyers like we're communicating with like a publicly traded company and then other than that like we're you know we're not there's not too many people that we're talking to so it's not like too much right now and like yeah. I'm trying to handle it and you know obviously everybody wants to make as much as you can on every deal so um i'm figuring out the best way to dispo because you know with the market we got to get creative um sometimes and like the novation for example and i had to call the agent i had to find an agent that was you know willing to work with us in that area and so different stuff like that so right now yeah it's just it's just me on the dispo um i for me let me know if i am right for what i feel the hardest part about you passing off this both the way your business works is you passing off the relationship. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cause like, how do you do that? You know what I mean? Like I can introduce you, but then it's like, I don't know. Um, I think at one point, you know, I don't mind it right now though, because like, again, I'm not at the point where like this, this gives me life. You know, I, I love, I love the operation. And that's like going back to the bigger picture. Like, like eventually I want to do other things. And, 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 but right now, like, I'm looking at all the deals. Like I'm, I'm looking at, I'm not talking to the sellers necessarily, but like, I'm literally, You're working I'm looking at the deals. Yeah. And I'm looking at deals. I'm like, all right, we can do this number. You know, I'm telling everybody, you know, so I'm kind of, and then I'm selling them all. So I, but I love that, you know, like I enjoy doing that daily. So, um, <laughs> is, uh, and everything you have is virtual, right? Like nothing is in an office or is it all? all virtual. No, 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 no. My, my guy, my, my partner's in LA. 
um, everybody, it's all virtual, completely virtual. So how have you built a good company culture virtually? I think it's when tough. I first got started, that was the number one thing I struggled with. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a lot better at it. And I feel like we have a great company culture, but it was reading dozens and dozens of books on company culture. And then I don't know, like you just can't bond with someone the same way, right? Like my, for me, my in-person podcasts, I think are so much better. Yeah. Just like yeah. the energy there flows better. The connection is right. there. They, you mm -hmm. can touch someone, right? And you shouldn't be touching people in the workplace, people, but right, it's real. For sure, 100%. No, same thing with us. And let alone just like, sometimes that's why we have to really implement the, I'm like, are these people, are they calling right now? Like, are they, have they made a call today? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you have to just be able to like, that's that's one thing. And then also like, yeah, like, and that's why the meetings, it's, it's really important to kind of be very, you know, systemized about that. You can't miss those. Um, but there's, like you said, there's only so much, you're never going to get to that point of like in person. Um, and, you know, eventually we may, you know, we've, we've thought about doing things like getting an Airbnb for like a month and just flying everybody out. There. I mean, everybody's either in LA or, or Vegas or something. So, and doing like a little boot camp where everybody works together. We all know each other kind of um, from before actually. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, we've, we've thought about it, but that's definitely something I'm, I'm, also struggling with in a way you know what i mean and not just the culture but accountability so the well, help me kpis we still do a lot of gifts right for most things we do gifts in every aspect and then i just do a lot of one-on-ones right the one-on-ones at least for That's like because if everybody knows me and then i'm there and like it's mm -hmm. that way i'm the glue and i can hold it all together and then eventually i got pass it off and then we have our coo do one on ones and she talks to everybody, everybody does their own huddles. But it's it was something that I never anticipated, right? Because in sports, bro, like we're with someone in the locker room every day, so people are walking around butt ass naked, waving shit around, mm -hmm. and like you're all goofing off the whole time. And so you can build that company culture together. So it's a right. lot different. Yeah, I like the idea of the one on ones though, because you know, a lot of times it'll be like three of us or like four of us, or like we have this meeting, this meeting, but I think the one on ones is a good way to kind of, you know, be able to really dive in deeper i guess you could say with that person and 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 really build that up and have them feel like okay this person is will take the time to talk to me one-on-one -on -one versus like having a having me in this big meeting or whatever right and like do they like do you care about them like people want to know you care about them on the right. most form and if you never have like an interaction with them the man who the fuck is this guy he mm -hmm. just wants me to close mm -hmm. more deals like fuck right him. right and right, then, right, right, then, right. You, then we run into like the heavy turnover and everything else mm -hmm. um how has sports influenced your your mindset and your culture? Just the competitive and that go getter, like you know what I mean, kind of thing. Where it's just like that's that's what gives me life, and that's what gave me life when I played sports. Um, you know, the win. <laughs> I love to win. Um, so it's just like that's that's really what it is. It's like, and that's why I was kind of like in those that nine to five or eight to six, I guess you could say, uh, job that I hated was this. Uh, you know, you're not really winning. You're you're just kind of going the whole time. So it's just right, like, and nothing else is going forward. I get that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's for me. Um, that you know, and uh, but I think, but I think that the type of personality, right, like somebody you or I have, is just very trend, like translatable from that to real estate in a way. You know what I mean? Like I, I, you see that a lot. Like like with oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Pineda in Vegas, like he's a, I'm actually, I hold my license with his brokerage, you know, he's a, oh, dude, he's a great right? guy too. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great guy. Um, but he was a, he was an athlete. Like I, I think that translates well to what we kind of do. So. Well, it's the ultimate sport. And if you are a good athlete, odds are you're fucking obsessive with like mm -hmm. what you do and like being exactly. the best and you can just kind of funnel it over into something else and stay sane. Because, like, once you're done exactly. with sports, you have nothing to funnel all of that energy into, right? And that, at least that was for me. Like, I didn't, I was like, man, what am I going to do? Like, I got all right. of this <laughs> discipline and energy I need to place somewhere. Where does it go? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And that's, this is a good good way to, best way to do it, kind of, I think, in a way. Um, unless you're somehow going to continue in a sports career. Uh, I just think that that energy is very translatable in real estate. You need a lot of energy, especially when you're starting out. You got to be... <laughs> You're not going to get no deals just kind of, you know, lacking and, and just kind of half-assing things. So. Right. Moseying around, lacking. Nah. Um, 
What's the best business book you would recommend? Just right now. So I think for me, you know, this is like, a, and I guess you could call this a business, but how to win friends and influence people in a way for like communication and being able to like talk to people. I think being able to talk to people is so important in anything you do, but especially business, you know, for me. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You can tell me if that's, is that a business? Is that fair enough to call that a business book or kind of? I think, I mean, at this point and like of where you're at, for me, the number one skill I need to develop is, is like leadership and talking to people because I can even take the talking to people into like marketing and writing copy. Exactly. And I can mm -hmm. still take and scale something else with marketing and then I can lead the team the right way if I can know how to talk to people the right way. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's that, that's the way I was looking at it where it's like technically it's not, but technically it is, you know what I mean? Because that's helping me become a better speaker, which is helping me become a better leader, which is helping me communicate with people that I need to communicate with. And then the other two, the, the e-myth, is a, is a good like yep. small business kind of like you know being able to put people in the right roles stuff like that and then obviously the 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 generic uh, not generic but one of the best books obviously is uh rich dad poor dad for me i just think that was another turning point in my life where i was just like you know it got me out of that i didn't really even understand entrepreneurship or or not doing the nine to five before that you know so how old were you when you left your job i was 20 four maybe ish 24 25 maybe somewhere around there 25 maybe 24 25. 25 yeah yeah and then before that i was in you know i was in school you know um and you know i played sports before that and then i was just kind of in college i wasn't very serious about college i was just kind of you know partying <laughs> so um and 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 then i kind of you know but like but i but i you know i sat it through and i'm and i don't regret it because you know a lot of people will be like oh if I wouldn't have went to college and I would have started four years earlier, I would have made that much more money those four years. And I'm, I, for me, it was, it's, I don't agree always because yeah, maybe my major wasn't exactly what I'm doing at all right now, but it's more about the experience of being, I don't know, like a, you know, just a higher level person, I guess I can write better. I can, you know, I'm able to, you know, understand meetings and, and structure and, and different things. And, you know, I'm able to like, you know, I just felt like it wasn't a waste of time for me. You know, it, it gave me a certain element of growth that maybe wasn't relevant to my career, but it, you know, I'm a big believer in everything just kind of plays itself out. How it's supposed to be. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think about that, right? Like what if I didn't play football, but mm -hmm. then football is what's helped me so far in leadership. And like, I just went from like 18 years old and I hopped right into real estate and like, Oh, I would have made so much more money. But then at the same time, if I would have made that much money, I would have been a cocaine addict. I probably would have lived in Miami and I would have been going so hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes yeah. like I know I wouldn't have been ready. Like just based off of if you can generate that money that fast and some people can. But like, bro, my all I wanted to do was party. I wanted party. Right. Exactly. Girls, that's all I wanted to do. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So it's like that that's not what would have happened, actually. Probably would have right. Well, that's not what would have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um for sure. We got the books. What courses do you recommend for developing yourself? Like in what's called in real estate. In real estate. Um, you know, and that's that's one of my bigger goals for upcoming because I've only done uh I've done Steve's um and it's and I, I love Steve's program and I, I try and go to the in-person one like every quarter when he lets me, but um but uh, he that I love his systems one. I know everybody talks about the sales side, but I, I really like he's so like like methodical and like calculated yeah. and he's just like he's got it so systemized where it's just like that's kind of where we lack a little bit is like we're just we just get up and go and like we're just getting deals you know what i mean and being able to kind of see an operation and and talk with somebody who's a lot more you know he's just he's a true business runner you know what i mean like he's oh, yeah. this, is, this is like a, like a true <laughs> real business like um so that that steve's is, is definitely been huge for us um you know just just kind of seeing there their operation and then their systems is, has been huge for us. So um, if you're struggling with that, bro, traction and then scaling up, help me out so much. Okay. Scaling up. Scaling and, um, and then for company culture, delivering happiness by the dude who sold Zappos is the best company okay. culture book I've ever read. Great. I appreciate those. They have been um, those. amazing. But thank you so much for coming on, man. Do you have any other parting words, tips for people? anything like that any promo codes affiliates no not, not nothing really i mean uh other than just basically 
like you're gonna fall on your face and it's at the end of the day it's about if you come back and and keep going you know that's like the biggest thing in this entire business and the number one thing that has like enabled me to be you know become start becoming a little more successful and successful because i don't give up and so like yep. people that struggle and you'll have months where you don't do good and and like it's really about that's the moment where it's like okay, what are you gonna do you know and then if you give up like that's that's what it is you gotta just keep going you know you always just gotta keep going and i think that's what will make the difference between being successful or not hell yeah bro thank you so much for coming on and man. Then, yeah oh, and then my shit. instagram is ag underscore underscore real estate simple as that all right say that one more time i almost cut you off for the most important part <laughs> you're good ag underscore underscore real estate Follow him on Instagram. Again, you guys, if you're not using social media, you're leaving a million dollars a year on the table. I'm telling you right now, if you guys are in Florida, reach out to him to dispo your deals. Are you dispoing deals in Alabama too? Yes, Alabama, Texas, Florida, Nevada, everywhere. So awesome, guys. And if you guys are interested in getting any type of virtual assistance for your company, go to callmagicians.com. Thank you guys so much. Everybody have a great day. Thanks so much for coming Thanks on. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.